to devoted servant of Jesus Christ and a multifaceted figure in ministry, relationships, and social causes. He is a teacher, author, multiple awards-winning speaker, and the convener of the Singles and Marriage Summit, dedicated to promoting integrity and Christian values in relationships. PRM is also the author of Marriage Matics, a popular daily marital devotional and the host of the Marriage Matics talk show. He serves as the Zonal Pastor of Royal Sunshine Zone in the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Lagos Province 11, and has held positions with organizations like the Royal Debbie Child Care Foundation in the United Arab Emirates. PRM is also the CEO of World Wave Media Solutions and the Secretary of the Green Carpet Foundation an NGO focused on child protection and empowerment. He is the Peace Ambassador for Amawar Dauphin Local Government, as well as former Director of African Missions of RCCG Lagos Province 11, where he doubles as the pastor in charge of programs for young adults and youths. He has authored numerous books and is known for his speaking and mentoring. Pastor Minette is married to his wife, Rachel, and has three children. Ladies and gentlemen, let's make welcome Pastor Richard Minette. So much. Shall we celebrate Jesus this morning? It's Jesus. It's Jesus we are celebrating. Lord, we are grateful. Thank you. Wave your hands and say thank you to the Lord. Wave your hands and thank Him for peace. Thank Him for his faithfulness. Thank him for his mercies and his loving kindness. Oh Lord, we thank you. We give you praise. We are so grateful. Thank you for who you are. Thank you, blessed Redeemer. Glory be to your name. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. I'd like us to please, while standing, read the, a passage. In Genesis chapter 47, chapter 24, Genesis 24, um, verse 67. Genesis 24, 67, and then we'll read that and then we will pray. Genesis 24 and verse 67. All right, if you can see it on the screen, just let's read together. One, two, three, go. And Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent and took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her, and Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. Shall we pray? Eternal Father, we thank you. May this be the story of everyone here today in Jesus' name. Comforting love, love that comforts, love that does not tear, Love that will not destroy. Love that will not harm. May this be the experience of everyone today in the name of Jesus. Lord, some of us have attempted love and the story was not beautiful. And so a lot of people are saying, what's wrong with love? What's wrong with marriage? Homes are breaking today. Some have not broken, but they are already broken inside their homes. Every home, oh God, rather than experience comfort, that is experiencing pain. Every love story, Father, that has chattered lives and turned destiny is here today. As your word begins to come, let it begin to mend us together in the name of Jesus. Let it bring healing to everyone in the name of Jesus. Delilah met Samson. Deborah, Rebecca met Isaac. And the two stories are not the same. 
Delilah destroyed Samson. Deborah helped Isaac. Relationships that will help us. Relationships that will build us up. That will become shoulders where we can fall upon and where we can shed tears. Raise them today in the name of Jesus. This thing called love that has hurt many, love that has destroyed many, love that has even sent many to hell. Oh God, today we pray. Uncover what real love, genuine love is for us in the name of Jesus. Every Thing, oh God, that demystify love today. Let your word give us a revelation of true love in the name of Jesus. Unveil love in this service. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And somebody say better, amen. amen. Do something for Jesus for this morning. God bless you. You may please be seated. A very big thank you to. Our father and my father, the said man here, our daddy and mommy, Pastor Bayo Lugbimi, thank you so much, daddy, for this privilege and honor. We are, we are greatly honored. The Lord bless and increase you more in Jesus' name. Uh, myself and daddy, we've been together on this journey for several years. In fact, um, the platform, some of the platform we are enjoying, God used him to give us that privilege and opportunity, right from when he was at Lekki, and um, we've been joining together for several years, and it's been a glorious one. I thank him for this honor, and I pray that um, it will not be for granted in Jesus' name. A very big thank you to my brother too, uh, Pastor Femi, thank you so very much for guiding and helping, and also um, talking with us back and forth and for putting this together. The Lord bless you and bless your team. And that's very great presentations by the youth. Please appreciate the Joshua generation. Please appreciate the youth. Appreciate the youth. We bless God. All right, I've been asked to share with us on the topic, Love Unveiled. Love Unveiled. Uh, I discovered that what it means to unveil um, is to take the veil away is to remove the veil. Whenever there's a veil on something, you are not, you don't have full access. You don't, you, are, you can be confused. The, the image becomes blur and you can't see what it is exactly that you are beholding as it is. You see it through the covering of the veil, through the eyes of the veil, through the color of the veil. You begin to see it and then you are, you are sometimes, you, you even interpret it in that light. And um, so what we are doing is trying to you know, unveil what love is. That is understanding love from God's perspective, God's blueprint for love. I want to begin by saying that our world is um, um, in pursuit for love. We have been set on a wild goose Jeez. Now, let me start by saying, I know that our hearts are ready for God to unveil what love is. How many of you would really like to see what love is? You'd like to see what this, um, you know, somebody was asking me, said, is there still love in this world? Is there still real love, genuine love? People have tested love and then love has failed. Somebody said the other day to me, my love for my wife is dead. She has killed my love. And I looked at him and I just you know, smiled, and I said to him, no, you are making a mistake. He, he said, you, do, you, do, you, you need to know my wife and understand what I'm saying. I said, calm down, bro. You said your wife has killed love. I said, you will be wrong. You or God, who will be right? The Bible says love never dies. So if love never dies, are you telling me your love has died? Love never dies. The Bible says many waters cannot quench love. Neither can the sea drown it. You can't kill love. The truth is what our world has been um, celebrating in the name of love is not love. We have replaced love with the feeling of love. Love and the feeling of love are two different things. Love is, 
I mean, I mean, there is love and there is also the feeling of love. What we have been calling love all this while is not love. It's the feeling of love. Many thanks to the media and the entertainment industry. Because we did not take time to properly study and unveil what love is. The world has taken over the job and the assignment of interpreting and of defining what love is for us. So for us today, love is whatever they show to us. Love is that thing that you see on motion picture, that Cinderella story, that uh, uh, um, Aladdin, oh, a whole new world with new horizons to pursue. Those things that you see that happily ever after story and they lived happily ever where do they live where is the address <laughs> happily ever we are in hollywood and hollywood we are that story ended there that happily ever after. because the truth is that the only place you will ever find that kind of love with all those kind of romance, that package, that dose of romance, it only exists in your television box. It doesn't exist in real life. It's only in, the, in your screen. That's where it ends. That's where it leaves. It, that's not love. That's what the world has painted love to be. Praise God. So what we want to do today is, what exactly is love? In this service, we will try to, this first service, to unveil what it is. And then in the second service, we will now journey into it. Because it is one thing to know what it is, another thing to be ready for it. Because a lot of times we have, we have love unveiled. My, Shegu, where are you? You need to be in this service. So, this, this, I mean, it's a love service. It's a youth service. It's a relationship service. They will unveil love. If they unveil it and you see it, are you sure you will like it? Because I discovered that this generation, eh, what we want is far from what we need. The things we want are far from the things that we need. And if you don't separate your heart from what you want and what you need... What you want will keep you in perpetual want forever. That's why the psalmist said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not. You know, when you read that place, what you are thinking he's saying is that anything I want, God, no, what he's saying is that I don't want anything. I don't, when you find God, you won't want anything. Want is a sign that you are, that there's an emptiness and a vacuum that needs to be filled. And no matter what you want, if you want a husband now and you get a husband, after you get the husband, you will still be wanting many things because success and happiness are two different things. Why success is getting what you want, happiness is wanting what you get. Many people get what they want and end up not wanting what they get. So success is getting what you want. Happiness is wanting what you get. Because many times when you get what you want, you don't like what you got. That's why I tell people that it is easy to marry the woman you love, but very difficult to love the woman you marry. Many people marry the people they love, but find it difficult to love the people that they marry. That's why before you got married, you get as they do you, do you, do you. <laughs> okay, now how they do you now? <laughs> they, ne they never say come out on that. They have not even asked you to come out. You don't rush out with the uh, with the uh, uh, the uh, uh, that traditional cloth that you wear or the bead on your neck. You don't rush out. You don't run near that curricular knot. Since you married that man. There are people here today, 16 years after marriage, the only time your wife knelt down for you was on the traditional wedding day. After that day, if you tell her, say, I say, what? What did you say? I should do what? 
Because it gets as if they do you that time. You never know love. It is not enough to just want to get married. Because all that is in our head are the things, those images that they painted. It is not real, oh. Hmm. Hey, hey, I don't care. I don't care. Ah, I love him. I love her. Love is blind. When you marry out of love, make sure that you remain blind for the rest of your life. Because the day you open your eyes, you will see what you don't expect to see. Glory to God. For a love or relationship that will comfort anybody, the Bible gave us God's blueprint. That's what you just read. And Isaac brought Rebekah into his mother, Sarah's tent. And then he took her. And then she became his wife. That is, he married her. And then he loved her. And Isaac was comforted. The essence of love and relationship is comfort. At the end of the day, you have somebody who comforts you. Somebody you can share with. But you know that today, the story is no, no, it's not what we are saying now. Today that your husband doesn't know you have how many land. Today that in Nigeria, some women... The house where you are living, your husband is paying rent, but you are the owner of the the property. Your husband does not know. Today, that if I mean your husband has properties outside Nigeria, the woman, the wife does she has no clue. What are we talking about? Is this what you call love? Is it what you call love? When your husband cannot ask for sex by 2 a.m., on he wants to you want to kill me. You want to kill me? No, 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 no. On Monday, I'm tired. On Tuesday, I'm the rest. Wednesday, my men start it out. Thursday, you know I'm the one that picked the children. And this is the same sex that we were begging you not to have sex before you got married. You know, agree. <laughs> Let me ask your neighbor, are you ready for love unveiled? Are you really ready to understand this thing we are talking about? Ah! Some people, once it is 5 p.m. in the office, their nightmare begins. Because God, so I'm going back to meet that witch. The same witch that when they were begging you, you fought your father, you fought your mother, you fought, I can't understand how you just meet somebody and you fall in love with somebody because of that one person. Everybody in your past, in your life, becomes an enemy. This one is your world. Uncle sang song the other day. He said, my love, there's only you in my life. The only thing that's right. Everything is wrong in your life. Suddenly, only one person is the only thing that is right. Your church is wrong. Your pastor is wrong. Redeemed is wrong. Your neighbors are wrong. Estate is wrong. Landlord is wrong. Your brothers are wrong. Only thing that is right in my life. That tells you already that thing is wrong in your life. Can you enter shop right to go and buy biscuits? After buying the biscuit, as you turn like this, one sister, one lady, beautiful lady, buy popcorn. You buy biscuit. You not just jam each other. Bah, everything in the air. As the poor come ground, you bend down, him bend down. The next thing, on her head, jam each other. Cha. As the head jam each other, never just bring light. Wah. Mommy, guess what? I'm in love. You didn't shop right. You shop wrong. <laughs> ah, how do, what do you call love? The world gave us a definition. They call the definition falling in love. Let me ask you, have you ever fallen in love? Somebody looks at me and I say, love, 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 Kill and sort of love. 
Love you. There is no love anywhere. Moti Tawo. Okoro. Tell your neighbor, love is sweet. Now the, now the boss where you enter, now you determine whether you reach or you don't reach. Amen. Only you hear the English, I have fallen in love. How can you fall and be all right? That you fall first is a sign that you are lost. You see, in this kingdom, we don't fall in love. We walk in love. God who created love, you are not the one who made love. Esa. Eh? You know, when I wanted to get married, and you know, my pastor told me then, you need to pray. I was afraid of God. Ask me why I was afraid of God. I couldn't trust God. Now, it's not your time that every, everywhere, paparazzi, see hair, see eyelash. In fact, by the way, all these things you are seeing, they are not real. Oh. All these, those of you brothers that came to church now, you are eyeing one sister. He said, oh, my that sister, today is a love service now. My lady, my beloved lady, I have found it. In fact, God bless me. That I'm on that prayer that she pray that I will find the bone of my bone today. What? My Lord, my God, something that will chuck you and wound you. You are seeing air now. You are seeing everything. Everything looking nice. The world we live in, everything is fake today. Fake. All that thing you are seeing. Go look at where the hair not being owned. If church closed, I go just. The hair, not your own. Eyelash, not your own. Eyebrow, not your own. Fingernail, not your own. In fact, the one that tired me now, even the Manchester, you know, be your own. The barbed wire. One, bro one brother told me, say, ah, if I want to marry her, so that I will not be looking aside, I want a woman that has it all. He said, I saw both of you, yeah. I saw Levi, bo. That thing is not the way, it's not what you are seeing. The, this generation, the more you look, the less. It is a beyond C generation. They have given you an image what a woman should look like, what a model. They, they painted it. Don't be coming down. Don't, don't wound yourself. According to her name, beyond C, so is alive. She's beyond what you see. So, in our time, everything was real. It was days of SU. How can I pray and ask God to marry for me? God, I will, I will not leave my future in God's hand. This God, I know him. He will select Sister Dockers for me. Dockers. I mean, then, if God give you Dockers, he will dock my life. Because I could not trust that God can know what they call beauty. Beauty. So, I was afraid to pray and leave it in God's hand. Because if I pray, God will give me Sister Maka, the gown, the rich bottom, everything to be flare. That, that is, she will now be dry and look like my great-grandmother. His wife I want, not my great-grandmother. That's why those of you sisters that are dying to, in the name of holiness, you will not take care of yourself. You will not to shop and package well. What bad do You go pray, tire. Because when the brother sees you, he is not he, he, he knows that the, the spirit is telling this is the one. But what he's seeing is another thing. He says, ah, How can I marry my mother? You are 27 years, you look like 94 years. So which one this man wants? We wear, uh, we wear makeup. This man complain. We know we wear makeup. This man complain. Wait till they find somebody, there's something they call moderation. Say moderation. I tell people, the longer your hair, possibly the shorter your brain. You can't have brain and be investing your life only hair. Once they see you, the only thing is your hair, your cloth, your breast, your front, your back. Some people, they, 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 the, only, the only foundation they have is on their face. They use foundation, cover face. The day you marry them, when they bath, you go see Jebu Mark, that foundation cover up. So I'm not saying don't dress up at the same time. So 
But I bless God eventually what God gave me till tomorrow. I thank him for what he gave me. Because even after three children, if you still see my wife, you still toast her. Yes, by the time she was pregnant with my second child, five months, at stomach, the thing doesn't used to come out. Somebody came to toast her in a place of work. Her girls called me and said, Nah, daddy, this man is always coming here. Mommy is telling him, blah, blah, blah. She doesn't want to hear. Daddy, come and say, I'm not coming. Toast on. That you can toast a woman that have one child and carry another pregnancy. It means that I'm doing a good job. Any love that reduces value is not love. Some of you, you know how your wife was when you met her, when you married her. Look at her now. She's looking at your great-grandmother. You, you go wear suit. You go fine. You go to shop. Why can't you to shop? Because love never breaks anything down. You can't meet a person and be using them, abusing them, reducing them in the name of love. That is not love. So when you look at a girl, the only thing you see is a pant and a bra. EFCC should look for you. Because you can't reduce a woman's worth. That's why the first thing God gave Adam was not a wife. He gave him a garden. He said, till the garden. If you can make, you can till the garden, you can till a woman. Amen, somebody. So there is this wild goose chase or definition that we already have about love for us what love love is when you want to get married you wear your t-shirt he wears his own yours own you write his on his own he writes has both of you you wear blue he wears white you use white to write on your blue you use blue to write on the white and then you snap picture together hold hand by the beach you post it on social media that is love The devil has given us a wrong picture and so today we have reversed divine order. There is a blueprint for love. Love, any marriage that will comfort anyone, guess what? Love does not come first. Love comes where? Last. Genesis 24, 67 again. Genesis 24, 67. Isaac brought Rebekah into his mother Sarah's tent. Sarah's tent represents your place of comfort. It represents where you receive counsel. It represents where you receive succor. He brought Rebecca first before he even took her. Taking her was the second move. Number three, he married her. She became his wife. And number four, he did what? Talk to me, somebody. He did what? He did what? Who told you God does not have a blueprint for love and marriage? Whoever makes a product and does not manufacture it with a, bl- with a manual, even Babalawo, Babalawo that does not read book, when he makes the concussion, he will tell you, man, no, yo. When you use it like this, a one, yo. He's telling you this thing has a taboo. Nobody manufactures a product without a guideline and a manual. Who told you God did not manufacture a guideline for home and marriage and love? Oh, you think you are the author of love? You are the owner of love? Boy, you are making a mistake. Like I made mistakes several years ago. I thought God didn't understand love. He didn't know romance. He didn't understand what it means to touch a woman's breast. What it means to kiss, to smoosh. To, you know, you, you, you have this ideology that God is a cake. He is the ancient God. Oh, Lord, to the hour. Okay. He, uh, this God is an Igbani God. He's a before before God. He not open eye. Okay. Shh. Did you make feelings in your body? Were you the one who created your emotions? Mommy, ma, who made your breast? Oh, you think that God doesn't know breast? But he can make breast. He doesn't understand the feeling in breast. He's the one who put the feeling there. Be coming now. All your feelings, God knows them because he created feelings. He created emotions. He created love. He created marriage. He created breast. He created vagina. He created our sexual organs. And he, he put the feelings in them so that we can, we can enjoy what they call the gratification of sex. You didn't make sex. God made it. And he has a reason for making it. So stop thinking that God doesn't know what, I mean, he doesn't have a blueprint. Who told you? 
everyone who tried the, 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 to use the product their way suffered terribly. Ask Samson. Samson said, the father and mother said, no, not like this. So, God, are there no daughters in Israel? God said we should not intermarry. Why are you going there? He said, mommy, daddy, shh, get her for me. She pleases me well. She pleased him, but did she please God? The one who made marriage. Let me ask you, why do you think God created relationship with marriage? You think he created it for cruise? Just for Facebook and TikTok. That's why God made your bot and made your body because some sisters have no other job to do. Or just go to social media in the morning. Do like this. In the evening. In the evening. What's, what's wrong with us? That's what the world is showing us that love is. Now, the people that, that did those things and who sang those songs, endless love, go and check them. If they're married, marriage, marriage is endless. Some of them, I mean, at 21, Britney Spears was in her fourth marriage. At age 21. It's not working. Your love ideology, your romantic, it's not working. Because it's a warped concept about love. It's not love. So the devil did something. God's manual for love that will comfort you like he comforted Isaac is that you bring her before you take her. And after you take her, you marry her. And after that, love comes. We are not wired to love before we marry. Love before marriage is an error. Hey, I don't need a new thing. No one man will come at church. Where is good? Hey, Esa, Esa. So I should marry somebody I don't love. Ah, basically. Ah, ah, I can be coming down. Second service will take questions and answers. We'll give you enough time. We'll have your feedback. He didn't make this thing for you to enjoy it before you enter it. You enter before you start savoring it. Your mother and your father, our forefathers, grandmother, they didn't know each other from Adam. Somebody recommended somebody and they introduced somebody 40 years after. You can't separate Baba and Mama. Look at our generation. We started with love. We climbed horse. Valentine Day. We snap picture. We wear red. Mega chicken. After it. Where are we now? Mega suffering. Now somebody saying, I can't take shit from shit. This is over. Somebody said, one marriage, I, I, I told my wife, I cannot be party to this marriage. This whole marriage, that girl is my daughter, spiritual daughter, yet she didn't listen to me. She refused to fall, and I said, I can't be part of it. That marriage lasted for three weeks. Today, she married another man, a customer officer. After she married that man, they had a child, blah, 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 blah. They are doing the ceremony. I told my wife, she's, if I go, she will not believe that we have accepted that this wrong is right. No, I, I thank God for the baby, but I won't, I'm, I'm, I'm not a naming ceremony path. God didn't send me to name children, so don't force me to go there. The long and short of it, at the end of the day, I called, I prayed with her over the phone. At least nobody will see that when they, at, when we think, at the end of the day, oh my God, that marriage still broke. What happened? She caught her husband on top of her mother. Don't shout her. That's where we leave us. Every time we marry because of lap, every time you fall in love with lap, something will lap your destiny. Every time you fall in love with hair, because some people, only your perfume, that the smell that the perfume is designer perfume, say, so what are you trying to say? They say, why are you talking to a man, you're a woman? He said, you Pastor King, he said, you should start a conversation. I'm starting a conversation. I'm, not, I'm the woman at the well. So, eh, excuse me, what's the name of this your perfume? Sister Olenier Long Throat. It's perfume you smell. You are starting a relationship. Some women have been beefing some brothers, but the day they enter brother house, because say flat screen. Hey! Not just flat screen, no. Smart TV. Enter kitchen. It's see the kitchen set, cabinet all. She will now come and say, so brother Tony, what were you trying to tell me? the other day. If you marry her, she's not marrying you. She's marrying your kitchen cabinet. <laughs> it's what? Love comes last. I beg you in God's name. Because in the second service, we will show you what love is. 
Love is not feeling. Love is not all these things we are doing. Love is when there is no more salary. Love is when the man has an accident. One, one of the programs we used to hold where it's an interactive program, the guy came to the program with crouches. He came with crouches, single and married summits. It's a talk back program. He came, uh, when it was time to talk, he came out. We we're talking about lost love. And he said, the woman he wanted to marry, both the mother, he sent the sister to school. He sent the younger ones to school. He pays their house rent. I mean, this guy is doing well and taking care of them. And then suddenly he had an accident and they said his spinal cord broke. When the girl and the mother came to the hospital and heard their spinal cord broke, that was the last day he heard from them. They thought they would never walk again because they said they cannot walk. But by the stroke of a miracle, the Lord began to do something. Six months after, they began to notice that he was speaking up. Now he's on crouches. He said, she left me with all I did for her. And then when they asked her, she said, I didn't plan to marry somebody who is a cripple. Because you don't understand what love is. Love joins you to something. The Bible said, what know ye not? That he that is joined to a harlot becomes one spirit with a harlot. The Bible said, what therefore God has joined together. Relationship joins you to something. That's why you can't, you can't just fall in love with breasts. You can only look at a lap and go with a lap. Why? Any man who marries you because he saw your stomach, your breast, or your lap, the day he find out that your mother's breast is bigger than your own, he will leave on you for your mother. He's a whoremonger. The Bible calls him a whoremonger. A whoremonger is a person who feeds on whore, on prostitution. If he sees body, he follows. If he sees a woman's breast, spit to be funny. Sisters, cover your body. Don't let a man go for you because he saw your lap. Because it won't be long, he will lap you. If you marry a man and fall in love because of six pack that six pack will pack your glory and destiny in the future. You've got to find out what real love is. Real love is not what we say it is. Real love, we have a word definition, church. It's time to wake up in 2 Kings chapter 4. As I round up now, the Bible said there was a man, um, Elisha came to town and there was um, famine in town and um, no food. Chapter 438 to 41. 438 to 41. And then Elisha said the sons of the prophet should prepare big pot so they can make food. So he sent his servant to go and look for herb for food, for herbs and come. The Bible said he sent to his servant, but another person, somebody else outran his servant and went into the field and gathered wild herbs. He didn't know where they came from and he came and shredded them in the pot. Second Kings 4 and from verse 38 to 39. He shredded them in the pot. Now watch the result. Watch the result. The Bible said it came to pass as they began to eat. They began to die and they began to cry. Alas, master, there is death in the pot. The church has gone out into the field. We have gathered doctrines that does not belong to us. We are living by wrong doctrines in the name of love. We have brought them into the church. We have shred them in the pots of life. And rather than eat and then become healthy, marriages are killing us. Homes are killing us. Love is killing us. And the solution, Elisha said, get meal, get me food. As soon as they brought food, the Bible said he cast it into the pot and the death sees. The solution is the word of God. The solution is following God's instruction and direction. God has instruction and direction for marriage. We've got to learn to follow God. Solomon did not follow God. He thought he understood love. He thought he knew love. Look at it. A man thought, he's, they say he's the wisest man. I can't that's a foolish man. Wisest man. He marry one, marry 10, marry 30, marry 50, marry 70, marry 90, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700. Even if you sleep with one per day, you can't finish them in one year. That's what. And he said, Aah! I will kill myself. It's enough. I will not marry again. He stopped. 700. Added 300 concubines. He asked God for wisdom to manage the people. He didn't ask for wisdom to manage himself. Child of God, by God's grace, we'll be looking at what makes marriages fail. People want to manage their husband. 
People marry a man and want to become the mother of the man. He was tired of living with the mother. That's why he got a wife. You can't become another mother to him. You've got to understand how to transcend and dimension in the realms of love and be able to win a man without becoming his mother. You are not his mother. And listen to me, sir. Your wife is not a secretary in your house girl. You tell your secretary, make me teach she runs. Get me this. You can't do that to your wife. You've got to understand the balance. Why? It takes the wisdom of God and the instruction of the divine to understand love and dimension and make marriage to work. Some people married in the name of a wife. They ended up with a knife. Today, they are dead. Some have lost and gone to hell because of a wrong marriage. But I pray for somebody today. In the name of the Lord, you will not make a mistake in marriage. Oh God, you will not make a mistake in marriage. Marriage will not destroy you. Marriage will not stifle your destiny. Marriage will not send you to hellfire. I pray for you. If you are in any relationship now, it is a wrong relationship. By fire, let it scatter. That brother that said, I love you, I love you. Paul said, they met us a girl with the spirit of divination. Every brother that met you on the journey of your destiny. Every sister that cornered your life. And Satan sent them to destroy your life. Today, I pray for you. Let the relationship scatter. Let it scatter. Ah, I don't want him to go. I can't live without him. Every spirit of orgy, sexual loss, spirit of bondage, from the realm above, from the realm of the marine, Rakosta Pana Satiria, Isasosteke, Lecombre Ketelia, Rastuvia. We are here today on this exalted platform to make sure that love will not destroy you. I therefore pray for you. Every chain that burns your heart, that makes you afraid to walk out, what will not help you today? That chain is broken in the name of Jesus. Receive grace for instruction. Receive grace to hear. Receive grace to be wise. And receive grace to follow. Sisters and brothers, if you are in a relationship, pastor does not know about it. It will destroy you. You bring them first. Say bring them. Isaac brought her before he took her. If you can't bring them, you never reach the age. Don't, don't, don't be sure before you bring No, Bring them. Because in the multitude of counselors, their safety. You see, after you are falling in love, you want to bring them. It's an error already. Bring them. And after that, you can take them. And then marriage. And then we'll talk about what marriage is in the second service. Because when people marriage is there, shall be, shall us a blessing. This is the promise of love. We will soon scatter all those things. You will wed on Tuesday. You will wed on Monday. You will wed on, on uh, Friday. You, wed, you see, you can't say amen because you are waiting to hear Saturday. You will not go wed on Saturday. Who told you Saturday wedding is the, is, the, is the big deal? Can you feed everybody in this church? Why must you borrow money to do wedding? God will punish you. Because you are not putting yourself inside problem. God will not follow you. You are borrowing money from bank to do wedding, to feed. People are hungry in Lagos. You can't feed everybody. If it is at the line, count us. Maybe we are 400. Yeah. If you make 600 plates, you know, go go ramp. Because some of these sisters check their bag, then they open their bag. They carry nylon bag, they come church. Nylon bag, they inside their bag. They want to take food that they will eat for the next three days. Celebrate Jesus, somebody, as you rise on your feet. The Lord bless you. I, I like to encourage you. I like to encourage you. I know you like coming to first service and go home. Ah, oh God. Don't miss second service. It's the bomb. I will show you the mystery behind Samson and Delilah and behind Solomon. Don't miss the second service, I beg you. Husband, if you want your marriage to work, that service, you can't miss it. Make sure you are there. And also, we came with two books. They were announced it to us. Two books. Uh, amen. amen. They come in now. now. Calm down, calm down. So you will talk after. Second service, we will talk. Wait, wait. So we have two books here. The first book is titled The Animal in You. The animal in you. Hey! No be man, I'm marrying an animal. Oh. How can I tame the animal? Like Esther tamed the animal in her Asiris. It doesn't matter who you marry. If your marriage fails, it's not because your wife is bad. Your strength is small. If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. They shall mount up with wings like... 
How does an eagle mount up? If you don't know it, you won't be able to mount. That book will show you the good animal instinct, how to build it, and how to tame the demonic animal instinct in the man and the woman that you married. It's 2,000 naira. The other one is, is a marital devotional. It is 1,000 naira. Marital, 30 days marital devotional. It will bless you. It will heal you. And by the way, if you don't read book and you marry, your marriage will be in red because only readers are leaders. God bless you.